Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at using curve tables to power the damage and it could be even other uh, values in our gameplay effects for our gameplay abilities. And we're going to power these by our character level. It is an RPG MMO after all. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So we're going to start by taking a look at our um, attack effect for our um, melee damage. This is when we swing the mace. And you'll notice here that it says pointer to a table we want a row from. Hmm, that's interesting. So we need to get some kind of table that we can use to power that. And what that's powered by is a curve table. And I'll show you how we can import those from Excel. Uh, or any other any other program that could export CSV. Uh, so we see here you're doing attribute based, and we're doing two times, and the backing attribute is strength, right? So it's two times strength, and just in case strength is zero, we add a post multiply additive value of one. Uh, for today's uh, tutorial, we're going to be playing with this pre multiply additive value, right? So it's basically strength uh, plus this times this plus this, right? So strength plus pre-multiply additive times the coefficient plus the post-multiply additive. That's how it calculates it. And uh, so what I did here is I decided that I wanted some diminishing returns. And so I pulled up a graphing uh, calculator thing here. And I decided that for a diminishing return, I was going to do a square root of x, right? Because it's got this nice diminishing return here. It doesn't have an asymptote, so it's not like it goes to an infinite value, which might be nice, but we, we don't need that because we're not going to an infinite level anyway. And so I've used it plus 9 to shift it up because at 1, I want it to equal 10, right? So at 1, I want it to equal 10. And then what I did is I used another one, another site, to basically calculate out a table, right? So I said, oh, let's do that. You can see here, x to the power of 1 half is the same as square root. And so I went and calculated these, and then I basically took these values, and I took them down to two decimal places. And I rounded up or down as needed. And I end up with uh, this Excel spreadsheet here. All right, so we've got our Sarath mace pre-multiply added value and our Sarath light grenade pre-multiply added value and those things match this. Right? Okay. So what I then did is I exported that to a CSV. Now do not must make the same mistake that I made. UE4 needs a lock on the file to be able to import it. I confused myself for a while because I could not import the file but if I made a copy of it, I could import the copy. So it was like, well, that makes no sense. And then I realized Excel still had the CSV open and still had a lock on it. And so UE4 just airs out and says it can't get some string value. So don't do that. Make sure that after you export from CSV to, to CSV, whatever program you had that was doing the export, close it out before we move on to the next step. So what we end up with here is we end up with a file that looks like, I'm just going to open it in Notepad here. So you can see, see, we end up with, so we got 9, 10, 10.41, 10.73. So just a simple CSV. If you don't have a program, you could just type this out in Notepad if you wanted to. And we're basically going from levels 0 through 20. This first one's blank here because that's what is the curve name. And you could basically have as many curves as you want, right? So your game is probably going to have 200 curves. So you got 200 rows in this CSV. And then we come over to UE4. And we go to, let's put it here, and we say import. And at this point, we need to navigate to our CSV. And we choose import as curve table. And we're only using integer values for levels. We're not doing in between, so there's really no reason for us to interpolate anything. So we're just going to say constant. That's fine. And it'll create this MMO curve table. There's the values. And what that now allows us to do is we come back over here and look at that. It's available. And we can pick the curve. Right. And we can preview the value. At level 0, it's 9, 10 at 1, right? All the way at level, see, it doesn't go past there, right? We only go up to level 20. 
It's uh, at level 20. It's hard to move that slider. It's 13.47, right? So that allows us to use these levels. Now, we never hooked up a level. So let's go take a look at that. So let's open up our attack with weapon collision. And you'll see here that on this gameplay effect, it wants an effect level. And we just defaulted it to one. You can see it's a type integer. So we need to somehow get our level into that. Well, over in OWS, we have a character level. And that character level is already getting loaded for us in our base character. So we're going to get character level. There we go. Now we're sending in the correct level and it's going to use that in this attack effect. So we're basically, let's check the value that we, we should get, right? At one, if I can get it there, time to use the, use the, the ma magic mouse that lets me uh, change the, oh, that's not even gonna work, okay, it did. I got a mouse that lets me change the sensitivity by clicking on it. Uh, there we go, at 10. So we're going to do our strength, which if we go back over here, we can see that our strength is 10 and we're going to take 10 and we're going to get the one for at level one which is 10 so we're going to be 20 and then we're going to uh, multiply that by two and then we're going to add one so we should get 41 let's give it a try We still have the print string from last time that shows us what we get. Look at that, 41. See that? So we got 41. Okay. So to make sure that it is working, let's come back over here and let's change our level to, we're going to do four. If we go back to our list here, you can see that at four, we're at 11. So we're adding one, so we should get 42. So that's an easy one for us to test at. <coughs> so let's uh, change the character level to four. And let's give that a save. Okay, now let's give it a try again. Well, that's not good. Eh, hold on. Okay, let's take a look here. It looks like uh, maybe attack effect was the same one that uh, that he was using. Let's take a look here. Yeah, Rampage is using the same one. Ha! <laughs> oh, but he's not sending in the effect level of his level. He's just sending in one. Why did he hit us so hard? Go, um, let's go check something here. Make sure we're pulling, we got the right values. So we're gonna go here and we're going to print string. Yeah, I guess it's better to pull off here, print string. We're gonna say, uh, let's see, append level is, I'll grab this character level. Okay, and we may need to, we may need to temporarily stop this guy from hitting us. Let's see if we can get a hit on, on him. Let's have this output log open. Otherwise it might be hard to see. His damage was getting mixed up with our damage is what was happening. So he was at still at level one and we were at a higher one. Yeah. So if we look here. Let's find where it is. Level is four, right? So this is us. The, the client said it's four, the server said it's four. 
That's good. That was an attack with weapon collision. And the output damage was 43, right? Oh, it's actually two more because it went from 10 to 11, but the coefficient was two, so we doubled it. That's why I was, I was a little confused there why I was getting, I was expecting to get 42 and I got 43. This 41 was him hitting us because he's still at level one, right? So later when we get him all hooked up and everything, we can have his level get sent in as well. But, but right now he's hitting 41. So we basically, that changed our value to 43. So if we were to go here and the next one is level nine, goes to 12, we could, uh, we could do that. Let's go here and try that. And that'll give us two more and we should be to 45. So if we go to level nine, we could also play around with changing the strength as well. Go hit him again, and this time we should get 45. And there it is right there. Output damage is 45, and again, he hit us for 41. Yep, so this is a way that you can go through, and you can easily build out uh, tables. So you can go and you know build out your tables and have all your values. You can use them in other places too. So let's take a look at all the different places you can use them, right? So it's cool you can use them there. You can use it for chance to apply to target. Anytime you see one of these things, um, you can use it. Uh, there's attribute curve. Yep, there's some different ways to pull from there and pull the thing differently. Um, if we set the duration policy to has duration, the duration can pull from it, right? So you can change the duration of uh, certain effects based on uh, your level and that table as well. So there's a lot of different uh, things that you can do. Let's go hook up the uh, light grenade. So we get that one working too. So we've got both of them doing the same thing. So let's come into light grenade here. And we're gonna go to game playability and let's take a look, find the damage effect. Damage effect is all the way over here. And we did what we normally do here, which is nice. We have our reference and we can say get character level. And we can plug it in our gameplay effect there. Okay, now I gotta find what effect that is. Light grenade, AOE damage. Light grenade, AOE damage. Okay, so it was 1.5, so we're going to come in here to this pre-multiply, and we're going to choose Zareth Light Grenade. And so what that's going to do is we've got um, Intellect, right? So that's also 10. And we do that plus the 10 here, so that's 20. But instead of multiplying it times 2, we times it by 1.5, which is 30 plus 1, and we get 31 damage on our light grenade. Um, so there you go. It's pretty simple. You, that's a way that you can build out all your curves for, uh, for choose, you know, changing your abilities based on the character level. Um, and as well, we're also mixing in the stats as well. If that's the kind of game that you want to create, you wouldn't have to have the stats. You could just straight up have, hey, character level. Uh, that's what they did for Paragon. They just used the character level directly to set the values for the abilities, but eh, we're creating an RPG here. We're gonna have some, we're gonna have some base stats. Uh, yep. Uh, so because we're doing the curves and stuff, we may not, we may not actually have the stats go up every level like a normal MMO. Maybe we'll just, the stats are the base stats, right? And, and they don't necessarily change. They're more like, what character did you pick? You know, maybe in the future, we'll go and modify the um, character selection screen at the start or maybe we can choose a different race and choose a different class. And then we can have it go and um, pull from those. So over here we have classes. And uh, the only class we have in here is this male warrior, right? And this sets the starting values uh, for, for each class that you choose. So what we may come and do in a future video is we may go add some additional classes and then where we can pick that is in the character selection screen, we can pick which one of those starting 
um, data sets that we want. And, you know, we could have, you know, maybe the warrior maybe has a strength of 10, you know, but we have, you know, another class like a wizard and they have a strength of six, right? So we could go and, uh, and potentially uh, alter it that way. Races could have effects on different numbers as well. So maybe in a future video, we'll take a look at that. But for now, all I wanted to show you was how you can get those curve tables into UE4 and how we can use them in our gameplay effects to alter the value by level. Until next time.